boys to entertain you With music and laughter to help you on your way So raising the rafters with a hey, hey, hey With songs and sketches and jokes old and new With us about you and Bill Blue So meet the gang cause the boys are here The boys to entertain you B-O-B-O-Y-S, boys to entertain you! Come on, my lovely boys, the mail is by here. Let's be having you uh, get a clap. Yes, sir. Two. Thank you, sir. Got a Thank you, sir. Got a lardy da Thank you, Sergeant Major. Macintosh. Sir. Thank Already you. a Beaumont, typewritten. Got a Sugden, nasty spidery scrawl. <laughs> and a Parkins. Beautiful handwriting that. <laughs> I got a parcel for you as well. Oh, thanks, Sergeant Major. It's from your mum. She looks after you well, doesn't she? <laughs> I hope she'll write to a lovely boy. She's bound to be worried, you know. Oh, yes, sir. Yes. Are there any more frats? No, there is not. This is for the officers. Mail, sir. Oh. oh. Two for you, sir. Thanks awfully. And uh, a message, sir, from uh, Div HQ. Ah, thank you. Ah, this is from Fiona. She wrote it on Wednesday. <laughs> How do you know? Does she use a different perfume for every day of the week? No, she does the bathrooms on Wednesday. It's Jay's fluid. Get <laughs> 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 that parcel open yet, Parky? No. She's done it up real good. What do you think is in it, Parkins? Uh, well, sir, she said in one of her letters, uh, She's going to send me a birthday cake. It was your birthday four months ago. Perhaps you missed the post. <laughs> it's a cake, all right. Oh, I bet it tastes beautiful. Your mum's a wonderful cook. I expect. <laughs> Gone a bit dry. Oh, it'll be all right. There's some lumps in it. Hey, up. She's written on it, look, on some of the icing. And uh, most of the pieces are still here, look. Uh, uh, look, look, and an S and an O and... A P P Y. Uh, hey, uh, and there's a T, and an H, and an I, and there's an N. <laughs> Soppy thin. <laughs> Shut up. No. Happy birthday, son. Happy birthday, son. What a beautiful message. Let's taste it. We can have a lamp each. Then we can mix the powder with some custard. <laughs> Thanks, Parky. Uh, Sergeant Major? Thank you, boy. Happy birthday four months ago, Parky. Oh, thanks, school wear. Uh, no, well, it's your birthday cake, Parky. You hear the bit with the pee pee on it. <laughs> <laughs> bit dry, innit? it? Well, it's been travelling. <laughs> you can taste the flavour it would have had. <laughs> I've got a bit of icing. Tastes like concrete. <laughs> this is the worst cake I've ever had. Oh, no, it's not that bad. I tell you, it's the worst cake I've ever had. And no one can accuse me of being a fussy eater. <laughs> Shut up! You want to make allowances. You can't put the proper stuff in in wartime. You've got to use powdered eggs. Perhaps that's why it's a powdered cake. <laughs> My mum's cakes were always terrible. My dad used to feed them to the ducks and then watch them sink. <laughs> You had no right to do that to you, ma'am. Is that me down? Ah! Get them in on parade, will you? What you get, fellas? Come on, move yourself, move yourself! Get them hats on, double up, double up, or are you sweating around this camp all day? That's our property. What time now? Men on parade, sir. Thank you. Now, stand it, is. I just had a signal from Div HQ. In three days' time, we're going to have a visit from a BBC mobile radio unit. Oh. Apparently, we've been picked to take part in a programme that's going to be heard back in England. Did they say what sort of programme it was, sir? No, just that it was to be broadcast on the home service. They'll want us to do extracts from the show. It stands out a mile. Yes, that's roughly the conclusion I came to myself. We're given 15 paralysing minutes. Just the cream of our best talent. That's a ticket. Leave them wanting more. Don't you agree, Sergeant Major? Indeed I do, sir. Generally speaking, they leave them wanting less. <laughs> <laughs> yes, well, of course, this is very important, so I'm putting you in charge, uh, Captain Ashford, and I myself will personally supervise the whole show. Now, what we have to do is to sit down and decide what we have to do. Uh, get them in, see, Dibbery, was I better? Now, come on. Uh, try one of the two chairs, Captain Ash, and myself. No. Yeah, you Marvellous. You spend months organising and devising a show. When anything important happens, they want to take charge. 
Shut up and pay attention. <laughs> Uh, thank you. Now, what we decide here and now is absolutely vital. We have to select our very best items, the very jewels in our crown, to set before the British public. Poor devils. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I was thinking about the British public, sir. All that blitzing and bombing and snooking at. I mean, the poor devils deserve something good. Quite. Now, let's think carefully and honestly. What is our best turn? My pipe, Eric. Yeah, so it's got to be included. Put it down, I should have. Excuse me, sir. Mm. Did you say this was going to be on the wireless? That's right, Sergeant Major. Oh, paper ten is no good, sir. You won't see it. <laughs> <laughs> All you hear is a lot of rustling. Yeah, that's quite right, of course. And it is not our best act. No, uh, excuse me, sir. My strongman act goes down best with the lads. Uh, they like to see me bend a big iron bar. What's the good of that on the wireless? I mean, all you get is a lot of grunts and groans. Mm, of course, sir, there's always Gunner Parkins, ventriloquist. <laughs> Very fine turns off. Whoever heard of a radio ventriloquist? Charlie McCarthy? That's one. <laughs> Peter Broff? That's still only two. <laughs> the piano's all right. Yeah, the piano's all right. And my voice will be all right. Oh, yes, put down the voice. Gonna, gonna... Uh, Sugden, sir. That's right. Yeah, mind you, sir, uh, we won't be getting his gestures. Yeah, and if we can't see what he looks like, I mean, I mean, he'll show up all the flaws in his voice. I do. Why don't we all turn round and just listen to him? Good idea. Turn round, everybody. Uh, sing something, uh, Sugden. <laughs> <clears throat> there is a lady sweet and kind Was never face so pleased my mind I did but see her passing by, yet will I love her till I die. Hmm. What do you think? Well, I think it's an improvement, sir. <laughs> I mean, when you hear him, he's an handsome six-foot tenor. <laughs> <laughs> when you see him, he's a... <laughs> Little fat mushroom. <laughs> I mean, he's known around these parts as uh, the singing coconut. <laughs> Let's face it, Ashford, they're just not ready. I'll get through to GHQ and cancel the visit. Hang on, sir. I've got it. What is radio today? There are a lot of funny voices and people opening doors and saying, uh, can I do you now, sir? And was there something? And then shutting the doors. Absolutely right. Where does that get us? <laughs> Don't you see? It's all part of this brave new world that we're creating at this very moment. People are opening new doors for themselves all over the place. And then shutting them again. Ah, well, that's the tragic side of the mask. <laughs> but the point, the whole point, the whole philosophic nub is this. You cannot shut a door unless you open it. He's talking absolute rubbish, of course. <laughs> yeah, shut up. <laughs> I know. I'll write a show. Oh, great stuff, Ashley. It, it, it'll be set in the jungle and it'll be full of funny voices and symbolism. Oh, fantastic. I'm going to my basher, I'm going to lock myself in, and I'm not coming out until I've finished it. Bravo, Ashford. That's what I like to see a man who can look a problem in the face and do something about it. Well, there's just one problem that worries me, sir. Uh, what's that, Simon? Well, they does not have no doors in the jungle. <laughs> well, I dare say Ashford will get round it somehow, or pull down the blinds or something. <laughs> You'll never know just how much I'm missing you. Asin, if I give you two cups of my beautiful cha, will you give me a small plate of your beautiful Chinese scuff? Yesterday you told me I make my chop suey by boiling all matters belonging to coolie. <laughs> Yesterday I'm not hungry. <laughs> Please, you tell me, when Parky says bad things about his mummy, why does Sergeant Major get his knickers in a twist? <laughs> ah, it all happened many years ago, when Sergeant Major is a rookie. He's meeting Parky's mummy in Colchester. Colchester? What is Colchester? It is a beautiful hill station, like Pune. <laughs> One night, 
night there is big ball in palace de dance. It is like beautiful temple. There the sergeant major sub and Parky's mummy dance every dance. And the moon is shining and the stars are out. And it was hoy hoy hoy. <laughs> oh, how you know about this? The sergeant major tell me himself when he was drinking much pagal pani. <laughs> ah, so on his way home, he fell in love with Paki Mummy. Yes, he fell in love. Oh, it happened like flash of lightning in doorway of home and colonial. <laughs> <laughs> and he was crying out with joy and his knees are trembling. <laughs> That night, with Parky Mummy, he think he become Parky Daddy. <laughs> Sergeant Major Sai Parky Daddy? Asin, we are from the East. We all know who is Mummy. But who is Daddy? <laughs> In Burma, we have a saying. Kung na sang kung jai, tho pami jai sang pami jai. What is it meaning? Ah, it means Chinese... Mommy, daddy, bad Chani baby. Burmy, mommy, daddy, bad Burmy baby. <laughs> this is very true. In India, we also have saying, Hijre to pada nahi huye hain, unhe to banaya gaya hai. What meaning that? This means, eunuchs are not born, they are made. <laughs> boys. It's half a day to make them dolls, let's be seeing them. It's one, Sergeant Major. Hmm. Let's have a look, then. Mama, dear, come right here. You call that a door? Parky made most of it. I call it a masterpiece. <laughs> well done, lovely boy. That's the best door this side of Calcutta. Because it's the only door this side of Calcutta. <laughs> right, Mr. Naughty Dark and Graham. Let's see what you've done. This is it, Sergeant Major. Oh, yes. I suppose this is the solid door we have in Oxford and Cambridge for them scholars to come crawling through on their hands and knees, wagging their brains behind them, is it? <laughs> Something like that, Sergeant Major. Sergeant <laughs> Major. <laughs> Sergeant Major, it's only for sound effects. Shut up! Have a look at the door that that boy has made. And hang your heads in shame. He did not never have no education, not never. <laughs> Except a bit of common sense and his own two bare little hands. A chip off the old block, that's what he is. <laughs> It portable as well. <laughs> Put it together again, Parkins. Sir. <coughs> there it is. If they don't like it, they can take a running jump at themselves. <laughs> and a sudden, what is that? It's the door. <laughs> Who for fairies? <laughs> for going through, it's for listening to. I bet my door sounds just as good as those two. What's going on, Ted Minion? Well, the men has made the door sass instructed by Captain Hatchwood. It's for the sound effects for his show, sir. Shut up! It's for the sound effects for his show, sir. Well, I'd better have a listen. I'll turn my back. Right. Uh, door number one, gunner ground. Door number two, gunner sudden. Ow! Ow! <laughs> I caught me thumb. Shut up. <laughs> Door number three, sir. I'm gonna park in. <laughs> there is no doubt in my mind, sir, that um, Gunner Parkins will be the best door. <laughs> when he's got it through its teeth in trouble. Yes, sir. Oh, I've just got to get it together. Ciao, lai, grand chai. Lovely heart, chai. Most excellent cakes for Anna Sam. That's it. That's the one. <laughs> we'll use that one. Chawala, can we borrow your cake box for the sound effects? Most honored, Colonel Sam. Special price, 
Two honors per slam. Ah. I've done it, sir. I've finished. It's all here. By Joe, well done, Ashford. Come on, chaps, we'll try it out now. I'm so excited, I can hardly speak. <laughs> Fend these rounds, Tom Major. And these round bombardier. <clears throat> now, when I sat down to write this, I had to ask myself a question. I said to myself, what is the one essential ingredient that a radio script must have? Don't you know what the answer was? Words. <laughs> it's apart from that, it has to have a position in space and time. By Joe, that's frightfully clever, Ashford. I wouldn't have thought of that, would you, fellow? Well, the time is now, the space is here, and it's about chaps and the frightfully amusing things that happen to them. <laughs> I've called it uh, Jungle Japes. Jungle Japes. <laughs> Absolutely first class. <laughs> now, the chaps are ordinary chaps, just like us, only much more exaggerated. <laughs> Oh, and it's all mad and funny. Ah, well, what do you think, chaps? Yes, I agree, absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, you'll be in charge and we start rehearsals right away. You got to accent to it the positive he needs. Everything all right? Yes, Colonel, we're ready to go. Where's the producer? I don't know, I'm a bit worried. We're due on the air in half an hour. Yes, well, we don't want to waste any time. Let's have a quick run through before he gets here. Right, chaps, places. <coughs> um, <coughs> go. Jungle japes are on the air with never a worry and never a care. We've lots of wheezes and stacks of jokes. So come and meet us, we're real nice blokes. Yes, once more, it's jungle japes. Fooling about tonight are Colonel Pot and Captain Kettle. I say, Kettle, do you like my Greek herb? What's a Greek herb, Pots? About five pounds a week. <laughs> <laughs> and that desperate, dunderhead disciplinarian, Sergeant Major Bullshine. You be quiet, be quiet, be quiet! <laughs> <laughs> Acting the giddy goat as usual, Bombardier Pansy Withers. Oh, it's such a scream! <laughs> <laughs> and not forgetting that voice in a million, the voice of Gunnar Lofty Sugden. I bring along a smile and a song for everyone. Only a rose for you. <laughs> to sit back for a sizzling, side splitting session of. Jungle shapes, and here we are. Ha 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 ha. ha. <laughs> Hello, who's this opening the door of the battery office? It's old Sergeant Major Bullshine. <laughs> Yo, be quiet, be quiet, be quiet. Uh, good morning, Sergeant Major Bullshine. Was there anything? Yes, sir. Bombardier Pansy Withers has got a complaint. We'll tell him to report sick. No, sir. He wants to charge two men. How much? <laughs> well, get him in. <laughs> Come in, Bombardier Withers. Lift right, lift right, lift right. Your new office curtains. Oh, be quiet, be quiet, be quiet! <laughs> oh, it's such a scream! <laughs> What's the charge, Bombardier Withers? Uh, Gunners McTavish and Smith whistled at me, sir. Get them in. <laughs> McTavish and Smith, if they, if they, if they! This is a very serious charge. What have you to say for yourself, Gunnar McTavish? Ochai de nu, Utsman, ochai! Excuse me just a minute. Uh, sorry to interrupt. Uh, Dennis Forbes Dobson, BBC. Ah, you're the producer. That's right, yes. Uh, you're going to be very much longer. I've got a broadcast to do in a few minutes. Yes, I know. You've just been having a run through. Do you like it? Well, I don't see that that's any concern of mine. <laughs> well, you're the producer. Oh, I see. You, you mean you expect to do that, uh, that stuff on the air? Yes, of course. Oh, uh, no. <laughs> no. No, 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 I'm sorry, no. I mean, I liked it. Liked it enormously. It has a uh, youthful ebullience, but uh, no. <laughs> but 
I've worked for days on this script. Oh, I'm sorry, someone's put up a bit of a black. You see, all I'm doing is a record request show. Two way forces favourites. Yes, the reason we're here is that uh, a Mrs. Parkins in Colchester is sending greetings to one of the chaps in this unit. My mum. My. F <laughs> <laughs> Excellent choice, sir. She's a very fine woman, so I'm told. You mean we're not going to sing or do our jokes? Uh, no. Why not? Well, this is a tricky one. I'm going to have to put on my producer's hat. You see, I'm afraid your voice is, um... What's the matter with my voice? Well, it, um, it gives the impression that you're, uh... Poof, sir. No, I didn't say that. <laughs> I did not say that. It's just that the BBC have a very strict code and will not allow any jokes that refer to people who are, uh... Poof, sir. <laughs> Can't we just sing? I mean, we don't have to do this rubbish. Rubbish? Rubbish? You beastly little man! I spent three days and nights non-stop of that script. The BBC are quite right about your voice. Steady on, steady on, Ashford. After all, you said it had a youthful ebullience. Who's so my aunt Fanny? <laughs> yes, we're playing the record of I'll Be Seeing You. Oh, really? Oh, we do that one in the show. Mm. The record has Vera Lynn singing it. Oh, I dress up as Vera Lynn. <laughs> I don't have to dress up as Vera Lynn. <laughs> I could do it an octave lower. Yes, I think we'll stick to the record if you don't mind. Now, if you'll excuse me, I've got a lot of work to do. Donna Parkins, uh, so... you'd better decide what you're going to say to your mother. What are you going to say, Parky? I shouldn't mention the cake. I only hope when the time comes up, I, I don't get too tongue-tied. I should write it down, if I were you. Good idea. Fancy not letting us sing. We've got all this live talent, and he wants to put on a crummy record. Just think, my auntie in Cleethorpes might have heard my singing. <laughs> it's just jealousy. Oh, don't be absurd. Dennis is a man of taste and discernment. Oh, oh it's Dennis, is it now? <laughs> you university types, you stick together. And you can't get through the BBC door unless you've been to university or public school. Yeah. <laughs> Look at Stein the Stephen. I don't think he went to university. <laughs> well, it's always going on about them semicolons. <laughs> Oh, Sergeant Major Saab, what heavenly joy. Very soon you'll be hearing the sweet tone of Parky's mummy, the love of your life. Yeah. Who told you that? <laughs> you told me, Saab, one night when you were drunk with Pagal Pani. <laughs> Have you told anybody else about this? No, Saab, I swear. You better not. Otherwise, I'll stick your head in that char and turn the tap on. <laughs> Shall I go and ask Parky if he can send greetings to his mummy? No. No. That was 20 years ago now. She won't remember me after all that time. Ships that pass in the night. Home and Colonial is a ship sub? <laughs> <laughs> Go away. <laughs> now, Parkin, stand here. Uh, yes, sir. Have you decided what you're going to say? Uh, oh, yes, sir. I've written it all down. Ah, good. Are you sure you don't want us to sing? Will you get out of my way, please? Ready, George? Yep. Yeah. One minute to go. Right, quiet, everybody. Complete silence. I'll just inform Colonel Reynolds, sir. Colonel Reynolds, sir, we're on the air! Shut up! <laughs> Stand by. Stand by. For our next request, we go over to Southeast Asia Command, somewhere in Burma, where Dennis Forbes Dobson is waiting to greet us. Are you there, Dennis? Yes, I'm here, Charles. I'm standing in a jungle clearing with a bunch of Tommies. They are hot, they are weary, but are they downhearted? <laughs> no. Beside me now is Gunnar Parkins with a message for his mother in Colchester. Is she there, Charles? Yes, she's here, Dennis. Go ahead, Gunnar Parkins. <clears throat> Hello, Mum. This is your son. <laughs> Nigel. <laughs> I think about you a lot. Thank you for the cake. It was smashing. Me and the boys all had a bit. It made quite a change. Give my regards to all at number 41, Uncle George, Aunt Mabel, Winnie, Harry, Fred, oh, and not forgetting the parrot. <laughs> See you soon, I hope. Oh, yeah. 
It ain't our fault, Mum. And now, to give a message to her son, here is Mrs Parkins. Hello, son. This is your mum. We're all thinking of you at number 41. And that goes for Uncle George, Aunt Mabel, Winnie, Harry, Fred, and not forgetting the parrot. <laughs> I miss you a lot, but I know you are in good hands because you always tell me in your letters about your Sergeant Major and how he looks after you. <laughs> Thank you, Mrs. Parkins. And now, here is your request. I'll be seeing you, sung by Vera Lip. <coughs> What's the matter? I haven't got the record. What are you talking about? We're on top of the pile a moment ago. I saw it. Well, it's not here now. Mm. We can sing it. We can sing it. Are you still with us, Dennis? Oh, all right. Oh, you. Come on, fellas. Get something. <laughs> yes, I'm still here, Charles. A slight technical hitch, I'm afraid. Uh, I'll be saying you won't be sung by Vera Lynn, but by the Royal Artillery Concert Party. Uh, how jolly. And now, would you like to sign off and say goodbye to your son, Mrs. Parkins? Well, goodbye, son. Take care, and please give this message to Sergeant Major Williams. Tell him to think of me when he hears the words of this song. <laughs> I'll be seeing you in all the old familiar places that my heart and mind embraces all day through in a small cafe the sun across the way the children's carousel the chestnut tree the wishing well i'll be seeing you in every lovely summer's day in everything that's light and gay I'll always think of you that way I'll find you in the morning sun And when the night is new I'll be looking at the moon But I'll be seeing you Boys to entertain you. Boys to entertain you. Boys to entertain you. 